Good morning trading fanatics, you know what time it is, flow with the markets Tuesday, we have to have an update on what happened on Monday and although it was a bank holiday, I mean we still got some, we still got some crazy moves and right now it's really good to have an update to see what we can do today because the market is already open, it's already rolling and I would expect a lot of volatility and a lot of volume today. Tomorrow, guys, keep in mind, we have CPI for the US, we have interest rate for CAT, we have FOMC meeting, which is absolutely crazy day. So again, uh, what I think is going to happen is we're going to have like a maybe a slight bit of a choppy day today, like taking the highs, taking the lows and stuff like this. And then tomorrow is going to be the big manipulation, like a big wick up, a wick, big wick down, because that's what usually happens nowadays on, uh, on NFP. So we got to be... A little bit careful i mean uh, what i spoke to my community this morning was that i mean you can just say you can just tell yourself well i'm not gonna trade before cpi and i'm not gonna trade during cpi definitely so i mean you could be taking uh today and even tomorrow off have a really long weekend within the bank holiday right and then of course i think like thursday and friday could be tradable although like on thursday if cpi makes a massive wick and like a massive range i don't think it's going to be very tradable but of course let's see just to say we freaking hit a hundred thousand subscribers on the channel i mean i'm i don't know what to say <laughs> 100,000, right and knowing where why did this channel start and how it started with a pure um like just a pure out of my heart to just share what i know to just journal my document my journey as a trader but like three years ago and it's just insane where we've come up and all the value you guys have been uh, um throwing at me so just again thank you for this i mean we're i i want to run a giveaway or something we'll see what i can think of but again thank you thank you thank you thank you and but again I'm really happy that you're actually finding value from those videos, which is why potentially you're subscribed. So that truly means a lot to me and I'm going to give my best to keep providing. Enough of my ramp, let's jump into some analysis. All right, we rolled the intro. Let's see what we can have for today. So again, we had bank holiday. I mean, we had a really long weekend. We had the Easter Friday. We have, of course, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Yesterday was a bank holiday as well. So again, pretty slow. And today the market is open for the first time. So let's have a look what uh, the DXY is doing right now. Um, so again, as, as you know, I currently count Wix as breaks and I do my analysis based on that. So again, as you know, right there, we had a little wick that I call classified as a break of structure. Then we asked the question, okay, what caused it? It was this, right? And as you can see, we didn't quite pull back towards there, right? We opened, uh, right here on Sunday. We just climbed up, climbed up. Then we had a little bit of a bearish. And then there come, came a time like around, um, New York open and something. We just popped. We just popped to the upside and what did this create it created a brand new structure break so again as you can see analysis on on um, on saturday didn't yeah i mean nothing happened with it so what we have right now is again we have this break of structure and again if you ask the question okay what actually caused it well it's a slightly bit hard to to say because it's not this bearish candle that that is a very strong demand right but it's not actually what caused the break so like to me um yeah, well, this is the one that actually caused it at first. Then we have this boom, 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 boom. We have a sale candle. So really hard, really hard. I mean, you can take this, which was also kind of wicked. Uh, you can take this, which is also kind of wicked. So again, you can see that currently the situation is absolutely tricky. The main reason also is this massive wick. I mean, I'm not sure what happened this evening at 930, but uh, it's it's going crazy. And uh, even if I try to break the 15 minute price action right now, it's kind of a little bit impossible because we I mean we were bullish right there then we shifted the structure to the downside right there and then we had this massive wick that kind of uh makes a lot of changes to everything it didn't take out the high so we have perfectly equal highs on the top right and on the bottom we we took out the low and right now we're just kind of rolling to the downside so what you can do of course I mean I would personally give a little bit more time to the um, so give me a second guys then I had to interrupt my thought process, but I mean, in terms of the folly time frame, I'm definitely going to be waiting for CPI to really say, okay, that is like the clear direction. This is where I want to go because right now, honestly, it's tricky. Like this massive wick made it a little bit tricky to, to, to trade with. So right now, what I was going to say, what you can do is you can just zoom in 
right? Zoom in. And what do we have right now? Well, we have a recent break of structure down and we have like uh, the supply. And right now the market is just blasting through the floor and it's making a new break of structure down right there and uh, it has a brand new supply right there which just actually turned eu to the upside uh, i had a trend change up and yeah so we have a massive break lower so again the current momentum is bearish so what i will be looking for is for just some sort of a pullback we can take a hard time frame zone like you can see in the 25 something like this to have i always like having bigger zones and yeah just have a pullback drop to the downside and that's it currently the flow is bearish so i'm going to be following shorts on the dxy right now and yeah apart from that i would like to see the forward time from develop a little bit more i mean we are tapping right now into this extreme daily zone right there so that's pretty pretty extreme daily zone and uh why is my like this we're tapping inside, we react, but again, as I keep telling you on the weekly outlook, we are still bearish. And again, this is our supply on the daily. So the daily is still bearish. So of course, the daily can definitely prevail. So let's see. Okay, 15 minute time frame is right now bearish. Jumping on EU, I was just looking for a short trade. Uh, the market just actually massively broke above. So I mean, oh, look at my analysis. Isn't this perfect? So that's how I look what we have right there. So, I mean, yeah, again, I have a point of invalidation. Yeah, I had a lot of uh, questions asked, right? So, again, what is a break if this is this, this not a liquidity grab? Guys, I don't do liquidity grabs. So, I don't do sweeps. I don't do liquidity grab. I have them in my entry criteria, but I don't look at them like on a hard time frame and try to forecast what is a liquidity grab and what is not. To me, everything is a break. It's either a break or it's either a trend change, right? This week right there, to me, it was a trend change. Why? Because this was the hourly higher low. It got broken. Bearish. Period. Right? What caused the break? Supply. Came back into supply. Dropped. Right? What we have right now is we have a brand new structure break. What caused the structure break? This. Boom. So right now, we are still technically bearish. Our hourly lower high moves right there. This one is no longer relevant. Yes, we're still tapping inside this demand on the left, which is a... Um, uh, what is this demand? Yeah, it's a daily. Okay, so it's a daily demand, right? So that's a forward break. We have this daily demand right there. So we can definitely go higher because, I mean, the overall bias on EU, the overall, like, macro bias is, is bullish. And, I mean, we keep having those big sell-offs that always recover, right? So we have a sell-off right now, massive sell-off from yesterday. And look at how it's starting to recover. So I'm not going to be surprised at all if this forward uh, major lower high breaks. Right, so what I'm gonna just be doing right now is flowing with the 50 minutes. So I just tried to flow with it. I just tried to take a short. The market just smashed the roof, right? So we technically had a train change right there. Then we have a train change up right there, right? So it just keeps changing up and down. And as I told you guys in the beginning, I mean, you can just simply make a decision right now not to trade. And I think I'm about to make that decision because just looking at how it shifts structure up and down constantly, uh, it doesn't make it very high probability to trade. But yeah, so right now we are in a hourly supply zone. So again, you're pretty much your best bet will be to take a short. But look, since here, it's been nicely trending higher. But again, this is like uh, just the, uh, the pullback. This is the hourly push. This is the hourly pullback. So again, technically, we should be expecting a new lower low. But knowing nowadays, what happens nowadays, right, with the massive sell-offs and then the market always recovering, I will be also very open to take a long. So my setup right now is like this. We broke structure. This is what caused it. Major higher low formation. Drop to the one minute. Wait for the market to come in. Get your entry set up and take a long trade. Right? So I'm gonna, gonna set an alert right there. And let's see if it pings us. So that's the USD. Pretty simple. I want to keep this very simple. Just walk through the pairs without talking way too much. Euro yen, it looks like it actually wants to, to break higher. And again, I didn't throw any kind of forecasts on, on the euro pairs and on the yen pairs, sorry, because again, you can see this one is just rolling, rolling and rolling and rolling to the upside. And I mean, it's absolutely bullish. Again, according to my rules, this is the lower high. But of course, you could have taken it here. So even since there, you could have had a break of structure up, depending on how you look at them at the market, right? And then you have how high, how low, how high, how low, how high, right? It's absolutely bullish. So, I mean, we can definitely count this scenario, right? We can definitely count this bullish scenario. And like to me, it just look at, looks like it wants to break. So again, keep in mind when a massive high like this is taken, you're going to have a big pullback. So what I suspect could happen is we can take out this high, maybe even this one. And then we're going to throw a massive, uh, not reversal, but a massive pullback right so uh 
this is a very nice demand right now which is the last but this is again according to me internal but if it's not internal then it's a pretty pretty strong demand and if we jump onto the 50 minute yeah i mean yesterday pretty nice day we, we just chopped around to massively manipulate it below asia and then we massively expanded higher so i mean again a pretty good day a pretty good day uh to me i wouldn't have had trades right there because at that time to me the 50 minute was bearish right and i need to see it aligned bullish and it aligned bullish right there so again uh, this is why i don't trade jpys because they usually go like this right now we have the range like we liquidated the range we pushed up again now we have a range again took out asian low pushing up um so if i really zoom in this is where we broke this is where we had a break of structure up and we have demand and the market just right now broke structure up again and we had to move the demand right there so <laughs> yeah just looking at this it does not look amazing right it's long it's in supply it's kind of gathering a lot of liquidity it took out asian low it took out asian high right now it's about to give us a long setup honestly but i just don't like how it formed right i mean it's still like to me this is still a break so i'm gonna count it as a break uh but i would expect this one to maybe tc down and then give me a short well of course it can hold and pushes into the highs and take out the the hourly demand so this is how i look at the market right now i mean technically according to my rules i should be looking for a long right now so i will be on the one minute looking for a long right but if you think that the market is going to go down and that we're in a massive hourly supply zone and i mean we're still trading below this uh, lower high then you can definitely also take a short or wait for the market to trend change down give you a retest and then take a short so let's see flow with the markets currently it's long so drop to the one minute let's look for a long setup if it provides if not then we trend change down and we just go with the flow because again shorts are high probability right now when we are in this big zone uh, but we're, we're we're so close to taking out this highest liquidity that I just think like, come on, man, let's just break it and then maybe give us a short. So let's see. Let's see. But again, flow with the rules. Aussie dollar. <clears throat> yeah, Aussie dollar so played out on the short side. So again, you can say I give you scenarios. One was a long to break out above the lower high and then give us a long. And the other one was to pull back into the supply and give us a short. So that one played out perfectly. We had this very nice wick. So what we have right now is a break of structure to the downside and uh, this one is also looking like uh, ej it has this supply and it's just did it break it no yeah it's just about to break massive flush one candle and then we have like five candles of recovery so is it gonna hold i mean i don't know right so man why this one did not break so i mean this is a very high probability short setup because we had Asian high, it took out Asian high, and then it's aligned uh, bearish exactly right there. So technically right now, oops, we're bearish. Then again, we have to draw like a, a zone. And right now we can look for a retest of that zone and take a short. Okay. The only thing that bothers me is that we came so close to taking out this high that I get a feeling we could smash through the high. But again, it's not about my feeling because my feeling has cost me many uh, missed trades and hesitated trades. So again, this is what I look at right now. We got a trend change down. We took out Asian high. We're bearish on the 4H still. If we pull back towards this zone, um, I can be looking for a short trade. So we'll be looking for the market to get inside right there and potentially give us a short. Of course, we can set an alert and see if it tags us, right? So very simple. Again, the aim of this video is not to, to share signals and, and forecasts. It's to show you how I flow with the markets. Uh, there it is. So this one played out uh, beautifully. I mean, we suspected a long break. It happened. It gave a retest. Boom. I mean, wow, I mean, the actually, the Saturday forecast was pretty spot on. So if we delete everything, we had to break the structure up right there. We, of course, have our demand zone. The market pulls back into demand and give us a massive run into the highs. Uh, this is not valid. So we're still, yeah, we're still trading within this range right now because <clears throat> this is not valid. Um, okay, this one is tough, but let's just say I'm going to shift my rules for a little bit. I'm going to say that this is valid. Because again, sometimes it just doesn't make sense. So there is our forward range. Very nice push up. We are at a higher high right now. So what is your best bet? Well, it's either to, to follow the 50 minute until you're wrong or to start looking for shorts as the forward time frame is potentially going to pull back. And there is your opportunity for a short. It's just about to be making a trend change. That actually did. There is your short trade. So again, similar to Aussie dollar, I will be looking for a short trade on this one. So pretty much exactly same setups. 
The only thing is that AJ is actually bullish, while AU is uh, bearish. So, uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. Again, simple, nothing more to say on this one. NZDs. Uh, all right, so NZD is on the short side. So we're having a very big divergence. NZD is bear. No, we're not. Aussie dollar is also bearish. So, yeah, we broke down. We already pulled back even on Friday. And then we just opened. We threw a little bit of a pullback right there. And then we just broke, which is great. So there's our new break of structure. And, uh, yeah, so we can look at it in two ways. Uh, you can either take this one as your major lower high. Right, or you can even take this one. Like to me, this one is definitely invalid. So this pullback is definitely invalid. It is supply, so we can draw it as supply, but it's not a valid kind of lower high that if it breaks, you're gonna have a trend change. So this is my major lower high right now. So again, we can have a deeper top and then we can flush. So that's pretty much uh, how my outlook is gonna look like. But then of course it depends on the 50 minute, which right now looks pretty. Yeah, it looks pretty messy. This one. I mean, when I just open the chart. Took out the high, took out the low, well, if you really, 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 really zoom in, that's where we broke, that's where we broke up, then we broke up again, then we, we broke down, and uh, it gave a short early on, right now, it broke down, and um, that's our supply, so if you look at it carefully, it's, it's short bias, but I really like the Asian high, I really like this high, I just feel like it's gonna smash through it, it's gonna come in a little bit deeper inside the zone, and then it's gonna give us a short. So, uh, let's see, but I mean, again, this is your setup right now, so that's what I will personally be looking for, if it provides me an entry, I'm gonna take it, if not, then of course we, we're gonna be trend changing to the upside, and uh, taking and looking for longs to drive it a little bit higher. Although then, also, as it TCs up, it's gonna take the buy side liquidity, and then potentially we can again start looking for the shorts. So again, guys, it's all about strategy. It's all about what makes sense. But it's also all about staying systematic. So personally, again, to me, uh, this morning I didn't take a long trade. We had a, a member taking a stop loss on EU on a swing trade. Which is, again, it didn't make sense to me. Because we were way too high in the range. We were in supply. We took out Asian high. So it doesn't really make sense to go aggressive on a long after all the buy side liquidity is taken. So right now, if we also got kind of take out all the liquidity to the upside, we can expect the market to drop. So again, the long becomes a little bit low probability. But again, this is extra stuff. Keep it simple. There is the setup. Okay, this one also looks like a hard high. Ah, I was expecting one more leg to the downside. It did not give it. All right. So if it lit everything. Uh, so we have, yeah, we have a forward reversal here. What caused it? Again, dropping the zone, push, currently on a pullback mode, so 50 minutes expecting to be to be bearish. Uh, <clears throat> high, the low, supply. Okay, so here we had like, yeah, this is this sucks, but we have a little break, then it's up, and then it's down eventually here. Man, this was choppy. Right, so again, if we just focus on what is happening exactly right now, right, that is the current theme. We have a break of structure right there. Oops. We have supply. So if you pull back, I'm going to be looking for a short setup. There it is. So all the JPYs are kind of uh, forming in, in, this, in this sort of way, right? Kind of TC up, TC down. But right now, eventually, they all turn bearish and they're all bullish overall. So we can get like a short term short. Uh, to prepare for the long. Only EJ is, uh, is is currently bullish, and as I told you, we should be looking for a long trade right now. What's that? Those dollars is giving us a setup. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you can definitely be either already in a long... You, yeah, you should already be in a long trade. Exactly right there. Right, although having a big stop loss, 5 pips, or you should be looking for, like, for the retest. Yep, definitely a long trade right there according to my rules. So, let's see what happens. So, back at, uh, let's have a look at the UJ, which is pretty much driving. And what happened on, what happened on Aussie? Let me check on my screen. Oh, okay, it's, it's coming in for a, for a short trade. All right, so let's wait a little bit. So, uh, UJ, again, it was bearish, but again, the market opens, boom, bullish. Guess what? Everything you did right now is no longer valid. We have a break of structure up. We have demand. Right, and the market is currently bullish. Similar to the other pairs, currently in a pullback mode. It came on and it also took out this high. 
So just to consider like as we take out a major high on the left, it usually starts giving like a pullback. So let's see how that one is going to go. But again, we're having a nice correction right now. So 50 minutes is probably going to be bearish. Yep. So shift it down, shift it up, kind of shift it up again. And right now it's shifting down. So this is the last break that, of course, you drop your supply zone. And again, as I keep saying, you wait for the pullback and then potentially to go short. So that's how I look at it. Again, when I close this analysis, the market can just do this. Do I care? No, because probably I'm not going to be taking a short from here if it doesn't give me an entry. And again, I'm just going to draw a new, a new range and just continue to flow with it. OK, so that's how we I currently look at the things. And let's see. I mean, it's short, so that can definitely bring all the JPYs down with UJ. And we can definitely ride it towards this zone right there. OK, uh, I mean, 50% is probably close. Yeah, it's not very close. I mean, if you get a, a short before the 50%, it's even high probability. OK, so let's see. UJ is bearish, which is why all the JPYs are also looking up a little bit more on the bearish side. UCAT, once again, I never get despair. So I have I have kind of those two scenarios right there. Uh, but even if I take this, we had a break of structure up and now we have a break of structure down. So still, at the end of the day, it aligned bearish. So maybe the bias on this pair is bearish. So if I just remove all of these. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is technically valid. Broke structure up, broke structure down. And then, of course, you can draw your supply, which doesn't look amazing. And then on the 15 minutes... Yeah, on the 50 minute is just dropping lower. So in this case, guys, if you just think logically, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to keep shorting this pair. Although like this is UCAT and it can just continue dropping. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Why? Because we just made a forward break, a forward trend change. So what happens after this? We get a pullback. The 50 minute is extremely low, below the Asian low, made even another low. Right. So your chances of actually getting a short gets even slimmer. But... If you stay systematic, that's what you're going to do. Break a structure, retest, look for your entry, take a short. If it makes a trend change up, find your demand and take a long and ride it towards like Asian high or around 50% of that new quality range that is going to form. Okay, that's it. So let's see. Let me not throw any, any setups, any signals. That's how I look at it. Looking for shorts currently, technically, according to my strategy. Let's see what it provides. <clears throat> GU. Uh, yeah, similar on GU. I mean, we, we had a little wick. We came back into supply perfectly and then we made a new break of structure down. So right now we got to move our lower high. And we got to move our supply. So I'm even going to keep it to the wick because that's pretty much where we're tapping. But again, this one is also bullish on the daily. So we have a push on the daily. We have a pullback on the daily. And this one looks very, very, very flat right there. So this one can definitely be liquidity for the market to just smash through. So the daily time frame can definitely prevail in this case. Hey, yo, all the dollar is dropping from our zone. Uh, but yes, let's jump on the 15 minute. It's probably going to be bullish. Yeah. So, I mean, you cannot take a short on GU until the 15 minute goes bearish. Again, that's according to me. Right now, it's bullish. It's tapping into supply. And even if I have a top right there, I'm still going to be looking for longs. Because as long as the 15 minute goes, I go with the 15 minute until I'm wrong. OK, that, of course, has its disadvantages because sometimes it doesn't make sense to go with the 50 minute because we're like in this case in the forward supply. But I still do it because I've seen it numerous times. Yes, it has something on the left. Yes, it has this. Yes, it has that. But the, but the 50 minute just keeps pushing with the current sentiment. OK, so currently it's bullish. There is the zone. We had a massive breakout right there. We actually got a long early on right there. If you were monitoring, there's a long, but it looks like quite aggressive. So, yeah, maybe just a very aggressive long right there. So let's see. Let's see, right? <clears throat> that's the setup, looking for longs. And again, if we trend change to the now side, then that's when I'm going to look for shorts. So patiently waiting. GJ. Okay, so GJ, yeah, it's in this overall range. But just the most recent structure looks really bullish. So yeah, we had this supply, which is again at the 50%, which I told you it's a good supply, but it's not like uh, the, the, the major one. So that's the major one. We're tapping inside right now. That's the major one to me. To you, we could be already bullish. Okay, so we can also, of course, count this demand. Uh, and uh, yeah, so dropping on the 15 minute. We took out Asian high. This is our last demand zone. <clears throat> last demand. And there's our trend change. So technically right now, we, we should be looking for longs. But knowing how all the JPYs are developing right now, I do get a feeling we might TC down. 
and then get a short. So that will be your best bet. Why? Because you're in a far supply. We had a very nice manipulation, right? Their Asian range took out the high. So very good. Tapping into supply. So right now, all I need is to have a trend change and then potentially to go long. I mean, if even if you use a five minute time frame, you already trend change down and you're given, given the short right there. So let's see. But again, technically to me, you could be looking for longs right now as well. So I can take the long. If you have a stop loss, good, you're wrong. Now we jump onto the next trade and the next trade is going to be a win. So let's see. There are my two scenarios. Again, technically right now for me, I should be looking for longs. But again, as I say, there is a little bit of a gap within my my strategy because it's way too systematic and sometimes it doesn't kind of consider little things like this that oftentimes it doesn't make sense to go long at a specific place okay but again this is really hard to systematize which is again you got to be uh, making a decision sure i can be taking losses but that's fine so that's the setup you can be looking for a long right now if provided the setup and if we tc down look for the retest and grab the short goat Oh, that's not goat. There is goat. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, we're back into this demand. We didn't really quite through a pullback. Oh no. Oh yeah, that's Sunday. So the market just opened and just boop, flushed to the downside. So right now we're that back right there. There. Do, do, do. Let's see. We're back down there. Oh yeah. So we had a break of structure right here. I was just looking at right there if this was equal. It's not. And uh, we dropped lower. So right now, what is the supply? It's this. And it looks like we're going to break higher from this demand, which was a daily zone or no, it's not a daily zone. But again, the daily time frame is bullish. There is the low. There is the high. We pull back. Did we get to 50%? Oh, yes, we did. Right. So right now, it could be time for us to reverse bullish. And again, the four hour time frame right now is tapping into this supply. But again, the hard time frame is going to prevail, which in this case could be the daily. And the 50 minute is currently bullish. There's the last break. There's the last demand zone. So if you actually get a long trade right there, it could be good because I get a feeling we might be breaking above this zone. So there is my setup. Of course, it can continue pushing higher. So then you can still look for this if it does not create like a brand new, brand new range. So let's see. That's gold. I have a feeling we might be turning bullish if the dollar continues to flush, depending, of course, on what is going to happen tomorrow. I get the bullish vibe on gold. So if you get a long trade, then definitely go for it. And uh, yeah, I mean, yesterday we pulled back, we dropped, tapped in demand zone, aligned bullish, and you could be taking longs right now. So let's see. But again, I really want to see this fall structure break. After the break of this fall structure, you can, of course, expect a little bit of a pullback, right? And then, of course, we can start targeting the, the supplies on the left, which again are usually structural liquidity or reaction point. So it's going to tap in, react, tap in, react, and then eventually it's going to break the major high. So that's my forecast on gold. Overall bullish. Again, I don't want to be too early because tomorrow could open and we can smash to the downside. We don't know. But right now, looking at the flow, it's bullish. Uh, US 30, I'm not trading right now, so I'm not going to be breaking it down. <clears throat> We're stuck in this range. So again, what you do in the range, you don't trade too much. Okay. Uh, we tapped inside and we technically uh, made like we took out this high, which... huh? Okay, so Avanda is definitely wronger than the wronger. Uh, it's definitely different than what I use. So I definitely got to be careful with this. But I mean, yeah, on, on my broker right now, there there is a trend change down. And I mean, you could be looking for shorts because you're in a forward supply. Okay, so that's pretty much the setup. But again, I'm not touching it. Especially this one, I'm not touching it until tomorrow. And the other ones as well. Okay, ooh, this one opened yesterday, massively smashed lower. Um, and right now it's recovering higher. Yeah, that's funk, funky stuff. So we technically broke up right there, and then you could say that we also shifted down. And then right now it should be making a break of structure higher. So, yeah, that is tricky. That's tricky. So again, play with the 50 minutes. See what's gonna happen. Looking at a lot of volatility right now. And again, knowing what is coming in tomorrow, I would be skipping. I'm not going to be playing with indices because they can be very manipulative at that time. So guys, again, be careful. This one as well. Took out the high, took out the low, and right now it's about to take out the high. No. There's the low. And then, yes, technically this is our supply. So uh, looking at this massive momentum coming from the downside again i get a feeling it will continue to push up and maybe revisit some of these uh higher levels so let's see again i'm not trading in the season two tomorrow and maybe even this week let's see 
Look at that. Yo. What is happening with this crypto? Okay. So crypto yet makes another massive leg to the upside. And it's tapping 30k exactly right now by the time we speak. It just tapped 30k. Yeah. Massive. Now is the time when you say, Oh man, I wish I bought down there. I knew it's gonna go up. Right? <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I don't trade crypto. I mean, it's expanded. It's great. I have like a couple of thousand dollars in crypto, but after I lost twenty-seven thousand in the in the scammy broker, it's uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. But pushing up, it's nice. Ethereum also. But again, let's recap. <clears throat> DXY bearish right now, so looking for shorts. EU is bullish, looking for longs, looking for that little pullback right there. The JPYs, yeah, look at that. We're looking for the long and we just massively got a stop loss, right? And I told you again, this is the time when it doesn't make sense to go long because we took out uh, we took out Asian high, we're in the supply, we're very high on the range, like we're not trading from the downside right there to be taking a long trade against the trend. We're trading from the absolute worst level you could be trading, right? So, But even if we took the loss, cool, took the loss, journal it, delete everything. What happened right now? Train change down. What's the setup? There it is, right? So what I look for right now, set an alert, boom, boom, shorts. There we go. Aussie dollar came into our zone and massively rejected. I was monitoring it on my other screen, uh, but it did not provide like a clean setup. It just came in and, and went out. So you might not be given a setup if it doesn't come in again right there and then give you like a, a setup. So let's see, but it's short bias. Uh, if it continues to break lower, then you just keep following it. The JPYs are massively dropping right now. NU is also giving a short. So you can go and observe uh, NU for a short. NJ drops. UJ drops. UCAT is uh, funny. So again, as I told you, it's technically bearish. But it just took out a major fourly low. So it can give us like a reversal as well. Uh, GU is still bullish. As long as we stay bullish on the 50 minutes. So if you want to take a short, wait for the 50 minutes to align. GJ, there we go. As I told you, like it doesn't make sense to take a long from here. So there is your trend change. Draw your supply and try to take a short. Gold, long, there you go. It just went on and actually took out the supply. So we're officially bullish on the 4H. So again, this zone is still relevant. However, after taking out a major high, you expect a pullback. So once again, be careful. The zone and no trading on the indices. So that is where we're going to wrap it up. Um, let's see. I'm going to go on and focus on my graduation report. I'm uh, deep in the losing streak right now. Four break-evens and uh, four losses and one break-even. Let's see how it's going to go. All it's going to take me is just one trade to cover all that back up. So I look forward to taking one trade this week. That is going to put me a little bit ahead and then focus on what actually matters for me right now because like I'm freaking graduating. So I got to pay more attention to that. So guys, wish you an absolutely incredible week. Um, follow your plan. Be careful with CPI. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. The best place is via email at support at trainingfanatic.com. Do that if you wish. And uh, yeah, thank you so much once again for everything and talk to you on my next video.